Omagyan to Midandasya, Gena Jena Salakaya, Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurvena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa, Kadam Mayam Dadati Swa Padanti Kam, Bande Hum, Shiguro, Shiuta Padakamalam, Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha, Shi Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Draganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Sha The Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pastyati Dezatarine Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Sri Varshabana Devi Daite Kripabdaya Krishna Sambandha Vigyanam Daine Pramade Namaha Madhura Ojwala Premadhyā Sri Rupanuga Bhakti Da Sri Gauda Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostate Namaste Gauravani Sri Murtaye Dina Tarine Rupanuga Virurapa Siddhanta Dvanta Harine Namal Gauda Kishoraya Saksad Vairagya Murtaye Vipralamba Sambode Padambu Jayate Namaha Namo Bhakti Venodaya Satchitananda Namine, Gauda Shakti Sarupaya, Rupanuga Varayate, Gauda Vibhava Bhumes Tvam, Nirdisesha Sajanapriyam, Vaishnava Sarvabhoma Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha, Vanchakopa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pevacha, Titanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha, Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauru Triste Namaha Pancha Tattva Makam Prishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Dayatam Sudatau Pangor, Mama Banda Matir Gati, Matsarvasya Padambo Jo, Radha Madna Mohano, Divya Rinda Kalpa Drumad, Sisi Ratna Singar Sudatam, Sisi Radha Sila Govinda Devo, Pistali B. Savya Manam Smarami, Srimad Rasavarasadam B. Vamsi Vata Tatasti Tahar, Karsan Venu, that I go peer, go pinatha, taint to naha. Tapta kanchana, go ran gi, rad he, brindavane swari, vrishabana, suti devi, pranamami, hari priye, hare krishna, hare krishna, 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 hari, hari, hari rama, hari rama, 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 hari, hari. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Evan vidam tvam sakaladmanam api Swatmanam atmavmataya vichaksate Gurarka labdo panisatsu chaksusa Ye te tarantiva bavat tam bavat budim. Evam vidam tvam sakalatmanam api. 
Swatmanamatmataya Vijaksate Gurvarka Labdhyopani Sat Sujak Susa Yete Tarantiva Baba Rim Tambudim Kuvarta Labdo Panisa Suchak Susa Yete Tanitiva Bavitam Ritam Budim Ladies Avan Vidam, as thus described, Tvam, you, Sakala, of all, Atmanam, souls, Api, indeed, Swatatmanam, the very soul, Atma Atmataya, as the super soul, Vijaksate, they see, Guru, from the spiritual master, Arka, who is like the sun, Labda, received, Upanisat, of confidential knowledge, Shujakshusa, by the perfect eye, yea, who, te, they, taranti, cross over, eva, easily, <coughs> bhava, of material existence, amritam, amrita, which is not real, Ambudim, the ocean. Well, this is this whole chapter is Brahma's prayer, prayers to Lord Krishna. Continuation: Those who have received the clear vision of knowledge from the sun-like spiritual master can see you in this way, as the very soul of all souls, the super soul of everyone's own self. Thus, understanding your original personality, 
they are able to cross over the ocean of illusory material existence. Please repeat, those who have received the clear vision of knowledge from the sunlight spiritual master can see you in this way as the very soul of all souls. The super soul of everyone's own self. Thus, understanding your original personality, they are able to cross over the ocean of illusory material existence. Mm, very short purport, and actually, it's just a verse from the Gita. Four nine, Janma karma chime divyam evam yo veti tatvataham taktwa deham purna janma naiti mameti sorjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, our Arjun. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mom Vishnu Badai Krishna Bastai Vutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa, Tarubhischa, Kripa, Sindhu, Pehvacha, Titanam, Bhavane, Bhyo, Vaishnave, Bhyo, Namaho, Namaha. Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Srivas, Gaur, Bhakta, Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. When uh, was it Brahmananda Maharaj at the time asked Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, what is the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita? Prabhupada said this verse here. <laughs> Janma karma chime divyam evam yo veti tatvata taktva deham purna janma naiti maumeti sarjana. So the qualification for going back home, back to Godhead, is given in this verse. Krishna is divyam, he's transcendental. All his activities are of the same nature, they're transcendental. So when he comes to this material world, he doesn't touch the material world. He's still in this transcendental position above the effect of the three modes of material energy. He appears to take birth, but he doesn't take birth because he's unborn, he's aja, therefore he doesn't take birth. But he comes and he accepts a mother and father and appears to uh, be like an ordinary person accepting birth. But this is all part of his activities. As he plays the part of an ordinary human being in the material world. But one should know that behind this, there is the transcendental nature of the Lord's energies working in such a way as to hide his real position. And one who can go beyond the understanding given by the uh, explanations can understand that Krishna doesn't do anything. He simply comes and performs these activities. But at the same time, everything is carried out by his different energies. And he performs the activities and his energies carry out all of the activities of his energies. So in the spiritual world, that is called Purnamasi. She is the internal energy of the Lord which facilitates the Lord's pastimes in this material world and in the spiritual world. 
to make them appear like ordinary, but at the same time extraordinary, in the sense that <coughs> some of his pastimes cannot be repeated or duplicated by anyone in the material world or even in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So to know that, what does it mean to know that? We can talk about it, we can speak about it, we can hear about it, we can discuss it. But what does it mean to know about it? Because it says here, one who knows, Krishna says, that nature of mind that's transcendental in my appearance and the, and the activities I perform, that person is actually qualified to go back home, back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. So we hear about it, does that mean we know about it? <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> that knowledge is not theoretical knowledge or book knowledge, it's realized knowledge. That knowledge which is of the principle of knowledge or what we say Realize now. And realize knowledge means to use an example. If you were to go into a restaurant and you sit at the table, and then the waiter comes and hands you the menu, and you read it and you say, "Oh, that was a great meal." That's theoretical. You may even hear from the cook how he made it, what ingredients he put in, and how long it took him. It's still theoretical. You have to taste it, and then you have to get the experience of the eating process. Once you do that, you understand, oh, it's like this. It tastes like this. I'm getting this particular um, energy. I'm getting some happiness, like that. So all of that is knowledge that is experienced, and it's not simply explained. So explained knowledge is there, but experienced knowledge is actually Krishna consciousness. <laughs> to experience the knowledge that Krishna doesn't touch this material world, although he comes. And to understand that he appears to take birth, but he doesn't take birth. He's like the sun, which appears over the horizon. There was theories years ago that the sun is born every day in the morning and he dies every day in, at night. That was an actual theory that went on for many years by the so-called astrologers of this world. They thought the sun died and then was reborn. But actually, the sun is never born or dies. It stays in its orbit somewhere. So in the morning we see it, and in the evening it disappears, but it always exists somewhere. So in the same way, Krishna's activities are always going on somewhere, and he never at the same time comes in contact with the energy that he appears in. In other words, he doesn't touch the material energy, although it looks like it. Just like he's eating, he's crying, Sometimes there's some mishap and somebody and Krishna gets hurt or something like that. But none of these things are actually part of the material energy. They're being orchestrated by his internal energy, Yoga Maya, who is making it seem like to us that he is acting and reacting like we are. But actually it's not happening like that. So... One who knows clearly, just like we use the example of eating, one who experiences that knowledge, because knowledge, transcendental knowledge, isn't experience. It's not simply reading books. So reading books opens up the idea of the knowledge, and that's called gyan. Gyan means knowledge. But then there is vigyan, realized knowledge, or vishishta gyan, that knowledge that is... What we call we call that knowledge intuitive knowledge. It becomes realized, understood, a part of you. When you know something deep within yourself, and it's no longer just some words on a page or some voice speaking some some philosophy. 
So that's the level of this verse that is being explained here. So how do you get that knowledge? <laughs> how do you come to that stage? And this is Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smarnam. To hear and chant the glories of the Lord continuously in the association of devotees through that repetition of hearing and gradually understanding. That's why it, it bodhiyantas parasparam katiyantas chimam nechantusyanti cha ramanti cha. Hearing, trying to understand, and then discussing. When you discuss something, it brings the, the topic to life. And then from all different angles of vision, you explore that same topic and you bring in newer and newer understandings of that topic from different angles simply by the process of discussion. And that's what this verse says, bodhiyantas parasparam. By discussing in the association of devotees this knowledge, it comes alive. And then you start to understand, oh yes, Krishna is like this. It becomes a, a feature of realization, no longer just theory. So this is the process of Krishna consciousness, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, to discuss the glories of the Lord, to go deeper into this knowledge, because this knowledge, it's jnana, but it is also unlimited. Unlimited means it's not like material knowledge. Material knowledge, when something is being explained, it reaches the end of its explanation and there's no more you can say about it. Yeah, that's about it. You can't take it any farther because it is static. Static means it, it doesn't have, a, it's part of the three modes of material nature. And therefore, it, it has a limit as the modes are limited also. But transcendental knowledge is unlimited that's why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he took one verse from the Bhagavatam, from the first canto, I think 10th chapter of the first canto. It was called the Atmarama verse. And he explained it 64 different ways, that same verse. <laughs> Previously, the Acharyas had given 11 or 12 different explanations. But Lord Chaitanya, being Krishna himself, gave 64 meanings to the same verse. Taking each word, word by word, and giving the meaning of each word, and then combining all of the words together in the verse and giving more and more meanings. So this is an example of one of the verses, how, how unlimited it can be in the discussions of the verses. And Prabhupada says, this is what we should do. We should hear and chant. And he said, try to see this knowledge from different angles of vision. There's many ways you can see the same thing. It's like a multi, what we say, it's almost like a, a prison. When you look through light through a prison, the light keeps moving and then the light keeps changing colors. So the light is one, it's white, but the prism makes the light blue, green, yellow, red, and various colors as the prism keeps moving through the, the color. So the color is one, but it can be reflected in different ways by the adding of that other element. So in the same way, transcendental knowledge is unlimited. <laughs> Each verse, I mean, you see the acharyas, even acharyas will have different opinions about the same verse. Vishwanath Chakrabarti, will, Thakur will give a commentary, Jiva Goswami will give commentary, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati will give commentary, and they'll all have different additions to the same verse in the, in the process of giving their commentary. And all of it's right, and Sridhar Swami also. So, so many personalities take this same knowledge and present it to us in different ways so we can understand it, not just in one way, but in so many different ways. 
That's why, in one sense, this knowledge is a little dangerous, <laughs> because if wrong people who are intelligent come in contact with this knowledge, they can reinterpret it in ways to fulfill their own selfish desires and make it sound like this is the meaning of what they are explaining. <laughs> That's why they say this knowledge in the hands of the wrong people is dangerous. <laughs> Like that, so that's why we have the spiritual master, because the spirit, the sun-like spiritual master, as it says here, he gives the understanding, which is the complete understanding, where the devotees can make progress in devotional service by that explanation, and not simply just a series. Because you see, people in the scholarly world, they'll read the books. They'll read Chaitanya Charitamrita. They'll read Bhagavatam. They'll read the works of the Goswamis. And they give their interpretations. But all of their interpretations are actually just external. It's like licking the, hun the bottle of the honey without opening the jar and tasting the honey. So materialists can't touch this knowledge, although they try to give some explanations to it. But it has no, unless one is a devotee and one is fixed in devotional service, in other words, the pure devotee, then they can explain this knowledge in different ways, like that. So, um, because the, the language itself is coming from the spiritual world, the Sanskrit language is not part of this world, it's descended from. In the, in the heavenly planets, it says that the demigods, they speak Sanskrit. <laughs> they don't speak Swahili or Slovenian <laughs> or English <laughs> or whatever else is there. <laughs> they, they, they communicate in that way. Because the Sanskrit language is the language of uh, devotion. And Latin is also the language of devotion. It's a derivative of Sanskrit also. In some ways, yeah. Okay, so read these verses and discuss them and try to go deeper into this knowledge and then gradually you'll start to understand more and more about Krishna. And when your knowledge reaches a certain part, point of understanding, becomes real, is it realized knowledge, intuitive knowledge. And the quality of that knowledge is that it elevates you back to the spiritual world. <laughs> Any questions, comments? Yes, Nitya Seva. Uh, I was thinking about, um, actually I was reading about this also, that um, Sanskrit language is spoken in heavenly planet mm. and also in the spiritual world. Right. Uh, so Srila Prabhupada said that one of uh, Bengali language is also um, one of those languages, like which is very close to Sanskrit. So yeah. I was thinking that also Hindi is very close to Sanskrit. Yeah, Hindi, yeah. And Hindi is derived from Sanskrit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, many of the words are the same. Just like, I'll give you an example from this word for word we just went. There's one word here. It says, Sakala. Of all. And in Bengali, there's a word called Sakale. And that means Everyone. Shakale. Yeah, Shakale. In Hindi, what is it? Well, Shakale is not actually in Hindi. Shakal is the face. Or, and if you want to say all, Sabhi. That's Hindi. Yeah, Sabhi means. But, not, but in Bengali, it's Shakale. <laughs> yeah, but if you just say Shakal, in Hindi it means your face. Yeah, many meanings, but there is accents on the word, on the letters that change the meaning. Just like if you say, Pita, 
Napita means father. Or yellow. So if you say Pita, that's father. But if you say Pita, my Pita, you're saying my yellow. <laughs> also Pete hmm? is the back. Hmm? Pete. Pig. Back. <laughs> huh? I ready dosia, yeah, pita. Well, that's double T. <laughs> There's two T's in that. <laughs> so yeah, and the, the accent on the word, just like that one Brahmin who was wanted to create a a demon to kill Indra, he chanted the mantras during the sacrifice. But when he chanted, he chanted the exact. Uh, words, but he put a wrong emphasis on one word. Instead of using a short A, he used a long A. And he got a demon to be killed by Indra rather than getting a demon that was going to kill Indra. <laughs> that's mentioned in the sixth canto, yeah. So just by a slight, that's why it says that the Brahmins in this age can't chant the mantras purely. Because the age of Kali has reduced the quality of the Brahminical class, <laughs> like that. <laughs> but when they, when when you do s yagyas, Brahmins sit there and they read. They read shastra when Brahmin when yagyas go on. They're reading shastras out loud, and that's going on along with the sacrificial mantras also. <laughs> Jai Shishi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Hmm. So yeah, you can see the what we extraordinary extensive and extensive meanings that can be derived from the same words or the same sentences like that. Just like if you say "stri," "stri" means what? Women. What else does it mean? It means to expand. To expand. If you say guna, what does that mean? Qualities. And what else does it mean? Rope. Mm -hmm. Guna means rope. Guna means qualities. Guna means modes. <laughs> so yeah, so the, the words have many, many meanings. Depends on the accent of the syllables. <laughs> yeah, so... That's why it says to study Sanskrit grammar takes 12 years to learn. If you actually want to learn it properly, it takes 12 years. <laughs> and when we chant, we make a mess out of it. <laughs> Instead of saying gadadhar, we say gadadhar or something like that. <laughs> Instead of saying guru, we say guru. <laughs> Prabhupada was one time he said, "I know you mean what you mean, but please don't t don't call your spiritual master a cow." <laughs> and he's saying guru, it's guru. Bande guroshi chananaravindam, not ende garashi, whatever you know. Hare Haraye Nama Krishna Yaravaya Nama Na Hare Hara. Hey Hara, you're saying yeah. all glories to Lord Shiva. <laughs> that's nice too, but that's not the meaning of the bhajan. <laughs> so yeah, that's why after 11, what was it now? After Prabhupada started the movement in 1965, 66 officially. But in 2011, the, the GBC, 2009, I'm sorry, the GBC decided these guys got to learn <laughs> how to speak this language. So they commissioned Lokana Swami Maharaj to write a book, How to Pronounce Sanskrit. Mm. Saproschista, I forget, I forgot the name of the book. And he takes many of the mantras that we use from day to day, and he explains how we should, how it's pronounced. Just like the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So it's not Rama, it's Rama. You see the difference? Rama, Rama. So the sound is guttural, you pull in the A. Rama, you pull it in. Rama, instead of Rama. <laughs> no, it, these are very, you say, if you say Rama, you're saying the goddess of fortune. <laughs> if you say Rama, or Rama, then you're mentioning the actual pronunciation is correct. So yeah, I mean, it's nice to get it right <laughs> after all these years in, in the movement. And if you chant the mantras right, the effects of that mantra will be greater than if you chant it wrong. Although Krishna is Baba Grihi Janardana, that he accepts what you're saying in a devotional way, but the effects that you get from your chanting are enhanced by the quality of your sound vibration. And when you chant it properly, then you get much more effect from that mantra than you do if you don't like that. Because each mantra has a meaning, and the meaning comes by way of the pronunciation. It says in the Shrutis that Krishna appears on the last syllable of his name. So when you say Krishna, you say Krish, he's not there yet. <laughs> and when you say Krishna, then he's there. <laughs> he come. So this is all very technical, but it's interesting because, you know, it's the actual real language. All languages are derived from Ultimately, Sanskrit is the mother of all languages. <laughs> okay, anything else? Yeah. I have one more question. Uh, I was thinking also about um, having consistency in reading because I really like to read Prabhupada's books. Uh, but then there are times when I'm reading for hours, and, uh, but then there are times when I'm not reading so much as I would like to uh, read. Mm. But then on those times, I'm just hearing lectures and conversations of Prabhupada. So That's it, nice. <laughs> but it's always I'm doing something. It's not like I'm not, if I'm yeah, not either hearing or reading, right? Yeah, yeah but I would like to uh, increase my reading more. But then I think I have this little uh, chanchal nature that I, <laughs> it's like sometimes I'm reading for hours, but then the next week, uh, it's not so much. I mean, I'm still reading, but it's not so much as I, as much as I would like to do. So, just how I can bring this consistency in my uh, reading? Well, <coughs> they say if you do it by the time, by clocks. <laughs> so <coughs> you pick a time period and you start and end according to that time period. And then you're well, you're you're bound by this desire to read a certain amount of time. So you say, all right, if I'm going to read for two hours, you read for two hours. But if you read till you feel like you want to stop, then you may read for two hours, you may read for less, or you may read for more. It's neither way is wrong, but if you're talking about consistency, then you got to put it in the time frame. The same is with my uh, <clears throat> chanting because sometimes I wake up really early. Sometimes I, I wake up at three in the morning or even two thirty, and then by the time you have Mangal Arti, I you know your rounds are almost done, and then you're here for some the whole program and few rounds are done, then you're done. Then I I, I feel you know very different. Uh, my consciousness is very different when I'm like this chanting before Mangal Arti also, and it's. Uh, but then there are times then um, this this chain kind kind of breaks. It's like one week I will do, <laughs> the next week, then it's just, I'm well, starting yeah. my rounds. Well, you have to see, uh, getting enough rest. You have to see what's, what's causing you to change, <laughs> like that. But what you say is, is also very fundamental, and devotees should make this also. Prabhupada said, every round of 
japa you chant before Mangalarti is worth uh, four rounds after Mangalarti. The rounds before Mangalarti are much more spiritually potent. <laughs> But don't take that in the sense that I'll chant four rounds before Mangalarti, therefore I got 16 rounds. <laughs> That's not the idea. <laughs> I'm a fanatic about chanting. I chant, I, I have to finish my rounds. I have to get up and chant. I can't do anything else. I'm just fixed on that. And I, it just keeps me connected, I think. I'd like to go to more than more than a morning program, but I just can't because I just want to chant. And once, and once I don't chant when I get up and I do other things, then I find it so hard to chant later. If I just start with the chanting and stay with it, and then it's nice. And when I break it up, it's not as nice, or it becomes, I don't know, somehow to squeeze it in here and there, you know. That's, but I wouldn't recommend everybody to miss Mongol Arting just to do that. <laughs> so the, the idea is to get up at two, <laughs> chant from three to five, and you're done. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> the idea is we get up too late. That's our problem. Mangalarti is at five, that's nice, and that's what we say, doable. But we shouldn't think, I have to get up at 4.30. No, get up at 3.30, get up at three. And chant, use those, those pre-Mangalarti rounds, they're really nice. As soon as you finish taking care of your personal needs and you just focus like that. And my first two rounds take me 10, 11 minutes each. Mm -hmm. They're real slow. But then they, the speed generally, most of the time, does. It picks up because I very carefully chant during those times. And it's just so nice. So, you know, we can make sacrifice a little sleep or go to bed a little bit earlier and get up a little earlier. The mode of goodness is prominent from, the, from 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. The mode of passion is prominent from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The mode of ignorance is prominent from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. So it's best to co at least complete your rounds within the realm of the mode of goodness is the best time for chanting. And then when the days come, then you have the activities and you can just focus on your service. You can also chant while you're working. That's also nice. Okay, anything else? Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.